Hello everybody, today we're going to be doing an unboxing and review and benchmark of this uh, Cryorig M9A uh, cooler. So, if you guys saw my last video, you will probably see why I'm getting this cooler. I intended to replace my Wraith Stealth uh, Ryzen 5600X cooler with a CPU cooler that will drop its temp significantly, but I wanted to keep a budget under $30. I initially went with the ID Cooling SE224XT in black. But the issue that I ran into with that cooler is it didn't fit inside my case, and I realized this way too late. So I'm replacing it with this one, which should definitely fit in my case since the ID cooling actually was only a couple millimeters from fitting. This one is a 92 millimeter fan versus the ID cooling's 120 millimeter fan. So I'm really interested to see how this one is obviously going to cool better than the stock CPU cooler. And it's probably going to cool better than the ID cooling because I can actually finally... Uh, put the window on the side of my case now because um, I can I can close my case with this cooler I couldn't do that with the other one so it'll probably improve temps a little bit and so I'm actually going to compare I'll do a little bit of a benchmark at the end of this video that will compare the Wraith Stealth to the ID cooling to the M9A that I have here and that way you guys can kind of gauge for yourself it's not going to be a super professional benchmark so don't expect anything um, like crazy good or the data is not like going to be super accurate um, but I'm going to do my best to try and give you a general idea of how this is going to perform in comparison to the other coolers. So let's uh, open this up and I'll uh, tell you how to install it and then we'll do those benchmarks. So inside here we got the, looks like some thumb screws. Looks like we got a back plate here. Maybe a front plate. This looks like the front plate actually. We have the fan clips. We only have two of them here, so unfortunately if you want to add another fan, you're going to need to find some uh, fan clips somewhere else. We have our warranty guide and install manual. I have some more of this Cryrig thermal paste. I've actually been using this for pretty much all of my cooler needs. Um, up through now and I'm pretty impressed with this paste there might be better paste out there but um, I, I imagine that this is among one of the top contenders and the difference is probably only gonna be a couple degrees and then we got some more th screws here these actually look like the uh, standoffs to raise it off of the motherboard because you can see it has uh, washers on one side then we actually have the fan here I was not expecting this. The fan's already attached using those clips. So the other clips from before, this is if you want to add an additional 92 millimeter fan. Very cool cry rig. I appreciate it. And overall, I was expecting this to not look as good as the ID cooling, but um, I'm, I'm very impressed with the aesthetics of this cooler. Um, I wanted something that looks like kind of neat and sort of catches your eye, but I wanted it to obviously fit inside the case. Um, and do a good, good job at cooling and I think for under $30 um, If you have the same kind of case restraint that I have this is a very good option and I'm really excited to see how it performs To get this ready for install I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fan now All right as you can see here This is probably the easiest to be done with a pair of tweezers to get that first one off. Um, it is a little bit difficult to um, Get your fingernail under there and I kind of chipped my nail a little bit trying to do that. It's just a little bit too spiky. Maybe something easier for somebody with longer fingernails, but for me it was a little bit difficult. From there you can kind of just lever off the other side to make that easily come off. And then this is just a standard 92 millimeter fan. Generally Cryerig's fans are pretty high quality, so I'm excited to hear, I should say not hear, how this sounds in my build because uh, generally they are very quiet operating fans and I'm really excited to see how well the CPU cooler cools. Installation here is pretty standard, pretty simple. So here's what you're gonna do if you have the Wraith Stealth cooler already installed. Um, if you already have that Wraith Stealth installed, you probably already took off the two plastic quick release brackets from your motherboard. If, you, if, you, if this is a new install, what you're gonna wanna do is remove the four screws and take off those two plastic quick release brackets from your motherboard. And so that way you just have the motherboard back plate that um, your motherboard came with. So you're gonna keep that back plate, and what you're gonna do is screw down these four um, standoffs so that the plastic washer is going down onto the motherboard. 
and then the side without a washer is facing upwards. So you're going to screw these down, one on each of the four standoffs from the um, back plate that came with your motherboard, and then you're going to slide this plate on, and because of the way uh, the Ryzen uh, mounting socket kind of goes, there's only one way to install this, so you can't really mess it up. And so once you slide that over these four standoffs here, you're going to use these thumb screws to tighten it down. And I like this design because um, with the AMD Wraith Stealth, it's kind of difficult to install that because you need to hold it against the back plate and screw at the same time, which is really hard to do with just two hands, whereas screwing down these, uh, these thumb screws, or screwing down these standoffs one at a time is much easier to do with just one person. And then after you've done that and this plate is fully affixed, you're going to um, take off the sticker here and apply your thermal paste to your CPU and you're just gonna stick it right on and make sure you screw these guys down tight. Um, you can't really over screw these because they're thumb screw tighten, so it's not gonna be very easy to damage your motherboard um, by just hand tightening these and you can't damage it um, by tightening this down, but you do wanna make sure this is tight so it has good thermal contact with the CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed really quickly and swap out my other cooler and then show you what it looks like installed in my build and then I will also give you those benchmarks. We are back here with the CPU cooler installed. Uh, a couple things to note about this install. I cut my thumb. Um, this cooler is uh, a little bit sharper than some of the, the ID cooling and the Wraith Stealth, so uh, just be careful when handling it. I kind of was putting a lot of pressure on it with my fingers to kind of get it into place, and um, yeah, it'll, it'll cut you. This thing is sharper than some of the other CPU coolers I've t touched before. Um, uh, a couple things to note when you screw it down to the back plate it will kind of like rock in place it won't it, it won't be like super secured um, but as long as you have those um, thumb screw standoffs tightened down so that the plastic washer is facing the motherboard when you screw down the cooler it will fit everything into place correctly and um, you can rest assured that it will be tight and secure on there um, and then yeah you just tighten the two screws on the left and right of the cooler to um, mount it down into place um, and then the fan getting that on you just have to make sure you um, pull and bend those um, little fan clips uh, over the CPU cooler so that you can see it's attached um, to that back part there and that it's snug into place a um, couple things I noticed off the bat this thing is actually a lot quieter than my ID cooling and I'm not sure if that's because this has the window on now so that it um, it's muffling some of the sound that I normally would have heard from the cooler. But not only is the cooler running quiet, it's cooling effectively so my other fans are also running quiet since they're all... The fan curves for my six other Corsair fans are set to... Um, they are set to, to rise and fall with the CPU temperatures. So uh, as long as that CPU remains cool, then um, the fans, all the other fans are quiet as, as well. So the GPU sits for me at idle around 30 degrees Celsius, 30 to 35 ish. Um, but the CPU cooler, this new cooler is actually sitting at around, um, low to mid forties idle. So like 42 on the low end, 45 on the higher end, which is a massive improvement over the Ryzen stock cooler. Ryzen stock for me was like mid fifties to sixties. So like it would normally idle around 55 to like 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and that's, um, it, it makes the fans run louder and it makes the room hotter when it's like that. So I, I like that I'm saving 20 degrees, uh, like, or I'm, I'm getting around 20 degrees of savings, 15 on the light end, 20 on the high end. And that's just when idle, um, when this thing is in games, I played battlefront two with it for a little bit and, um, battlefront two ran at about mid sixties, didn't break 70 degrees, kind of like the ID cooling cooler I had before. So that is a huge improvement over the stock cooler, which would be uh, mid 70s to 80s when I would be gaming. So um, that is that is a huge improvement. Uh, Wraith Stealth, like I said, 50 to 60 idle, 70 to 80 in Battlefront 2. Um, the ID cooling, uh, that that the SE uh, 224, that one is about 30s to 40s idle. Um, when I say 30s, I mean like high 30s, so like 30, 39 to about 45 would be where that one idles. And then um, it would be about 60s to 70s in Battlefront 2. It didn't really break that 70 degree threshold. And then the M9A, in this video, it's getting that um, 
that low, low 40s, um, like 40 to f 42 to 45 degrees, and in Battlefront 2, it would be at about um, uh, 60s to, to 70s. So again, it didn't really break that 70 degree threshold. So overall, this is an exceptional cooler. It f should fit in most cases. It's pretty, pretty slim, um, being that 92 millimeter fan aspect uh, form factor. So it shouldn't, you shouldn't have a lot of problems in most builds unless it's like a mini ITX or a micro ITX, then you might need to check your dimensions more. But in most cases, this should be fine. Uh, mounting process, way easier than the Wraith Stealth. That I think is the most complicated CPU cooler I've had to put on. Um, just because it, you had to have like three hands for it to be easy to install. Since you have to hold the cooler, hold the back plate, and screw at the same time. It's very, very difficult to do that with just one person. But this install, you didn't even need a screwdriver except for the final two screws to mount the, um, the heat sink down. Because the back plate and the um, front plate, those both, the, those are all thumb screw installs. So you definitely can't over tighten those by accident. Um, and then you can't really over tighten the uh, heat sink either because that is, um, it kind of locks down into place because there's that wiggle room. So you don't really have to worry about damaging much with this install, and it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, about 10 minute install, just watch your fingers to make sure you don't get them cut. Um, but overall, I'm super satisfied with this cooler, it makes my build a lot quieter, makes it a lot cooler, and with the fan directing that air out towards this back here, more of that air is exiting that, that grate that doesn't have a fan, and um, kind of just helping with the uh, air circulation inside the build it doesn't have as much of that heat just going directly up. Um, it helps overall just keep the temps down and I am pretty satisfied for $25. I don't think there's a better option on the market. And even though I was kind of concerned about it being silver and black as opposed to the ID coolings, all black look, it actually doesn't look that bad. I do like these little fin or the little heat sink fin accents. I think that looks kind of neat. And as always, Cryrig has very quiet and high-performing fans for low cost. Um, my original PC build, my uh, first build, had a Cryrig um, C7, I think it was, and that was a low profile. And that thing was really quiet, and it kept the CPU pretty cool. And um, I, so far, haven't encountered a bad product from Cryrig. They make pretty good products for a good price. Um, if you can find them nowadays, that is, because... Um, I think some of their trade is being blocked from the United States, so it might be more difficult to purchase some of their products. Um, I didn't have a problem purchasing this just off of Amazon, though. So, not too big of a deal for me. Um, and yeah, this $25 for a CPU cooler is a great price. And honestly, for me, I don't think that spending that much... I don't, I don't think that spending more money will get you that much better performance. Like, yes, you could have great performance from an all-in-one cooler, but then there's maintenance you have to add. And it's so much more cost up front um, for an all-in-one cooler. I kind of didn't want to go that route. I wanted low maintenance, low cost, um, good aesthetics. And Cryrig M9A pretty much fit the bill, so it's got my full recommendation. Um, pick it up in the link in the description below if you'd like one for yourself. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.